Let's consider uh, the transient response of a system. And I'll use an example to explain that. So assume that we don't have a, a wall of bricks, but instead uh, we have a sort of a, an arm uh, on which we are balancing a broomstick. It's upside down, so that's a broomstick. And this broomstick is resting on this arm, and this arm is controlled by a robot. So the robot is essentially balancing the broomstick, and it's allowed to move the uh, arm in both dimensions so as to balance the broomstick. And what we want to do is we will get a disturbance to act on the broomstick, that is your W, and our control goal is to maintain the broomstick in its reference position. So sort of if you were to look down from the sky and you were to draw a grid like this, something like that in a two-dimensional grid, we would say that the, uh, let's say this position is where you want the broomstick to be, the center of the broomstick to be. And that we want to, of course, make sure it doesn't fall down. Uh, and that it should, you know, so in order to do that, it probably shouldn't be allowed to be outside some zone over here. But anyway, let's ignore that for now. Um, what I want to focus on is the transient response. So let us say that you push the broomstick a little bit and it starts to wobble when it's being pushed. What the robot is going to have to do is to manipulate the arm in two dimensions so as to regain control. And so if you look at it in, uh, in, in this state space, so in this space over here, since there are two degrees of motion, I need to look at the position. And it could be that, uh, let's say the push came in this direction. So initially it's going to move in that direction, but as a call, because, because the robot is able to sense that using feedback control, it pushes it back, it overcompensates, and then it might actually go into some kind of pattern that wiggles round and round and then finally comes back to the, to the center. So that would be what's called the transient response. Okay, now, uh, Note, of course, over here that I actually have two inputs. So this is not a single output, single input, single output system. This has got two inputs. But anyway, ignoring that for now, uh, when we look at the output, it actually is given by this y equals gdr plus gw over 1 plus gdh. And if you assume a unity feedback, then h is 1, so it just becomes gdr plus GW over 1 plus GD. And remember that this one over here is the plant. This is something we don't really control. That's the plant. And this is, is, the, is the controller. That's what we can control. We can decide what the Laplace transform of the controller looks like. And so when you do the partial fraction expansion of this, the partial fraction of this is going to look like something like, you know, alpha over one root. So if you look at, let's say one plus GD has roots uh, A, B, C for the sake of argument, it'll be alpha over A plus beta over B plus gamma over C. That's what it's going to look like. And so when we do the inverse transform, we're going to essentially get uh, something that, so this is S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. So that's what it's going to look like. So the inverse transform is going to look like something like alpha E to the uh, minus A T plus beta, or I should say alpha star, beta star, E to the minus B T plus gamma star, E to the minus C T. And we take the inverse transform, but alpha star, beta star, gamma star are the inverse Laplace transforms of the numerators, which I'm ignoring. But this is the important point. If A and B and C are all less than equal, uh, less than equal to zero or less than zero, then we know that all of the uh, behavior of Y is always going to be going down to zero. So by Y, I mean the amount of d uh, disturbance of the broom handle from the center point, which is going to be zero, zero. So we can think of Y as being, in some sense, the modulus of the displacement of the broomstick center of gravity from the center point. And that modulus is going to decay down to zero very quickly 
if a, b, and c are large, because we're going to have e to the minus a, t, some, something e to the minus b, t, something e to the minus c, t. Uh, and it, so we need all of these to be uh, less than zero. I'm sorry, I should say this is e to the plus, which is the value should be uh, less than zero. On the other hand, if any of these values is greater than zero, then y is going to diverge. In other words, y is going to go larger and larger with time, and that would be like something like the broom handle falling right off. So in trying to respond to the disturbance, the transient response causes the system to be unstable, and that would be a bad transient response. So to sum up, what you want to make sure is to design this function over here, d, such that its roots are going to be on the left half plane. And uh, if you remember, these are called the poles. So we need to place the poles so that they're in the left half plane. And if you do this, then the transient response is also going to die away and the system will regain stability after some period of time.